I love her. Carolyn, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. You, you look wonderful as uh, always. T tell us thank about you. your uh, holidays. A nice holiday? It was a nice holiday. Um, I got stuck in the Arctic vortex like everybody mm -hmm. else. And um, yeah, that, I just, you know, I made a snowman. Um, uh, lots of hot dogs and now, whatever other canned foods were around. People were uh, telling me that you're living part time or some of your time in Paris. Is that, that true? Yes, I do. I actually um, I decided to take the plunge and move to Paris, um, and uh, it's it's great. I love it. I mean, you know, of course, some of the um, you know the stardust twinkles worn off a little bit mm -hmm. um, now, and you know you start to all the things that you thought were charming before are just. Annoying. Yeah, well. <laughs> I, you know, I don't want to say I'm just offended an entire nation of people, but <laughs> like usual. But um, well, they're, they're, I'll tell you, they're lucky to have you, for heaven's sake. Well, that's what I think, of mm -hmm. course. <laughs> no, but you know, it's the, it's the little things. Like, um, you know, I mean, of course, when I first got there, I thought that people were not, that the whole kind of rude Parisian thing was just like, people aren't rude, they're mm -hmm. wonderful. Yes. Oh, that was before I was a mainstay there, and then people decided that. Once I wasn't going away, they could just be really terribly rude to me. <laughs> they, they could relax and be rude. Yeah. Just be themselves. Now, uh, I know very little about uh, Paris. Tell us, uh, which uh, arrondissement? Oh. Wow. Oh, around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> around, around. I live in the left bank, actually. Oh, which it's is very nice over yes, there. Yes, it's the it? kind of artists. Um, is it near the Latin Quarter? Uh, yes, it's close to Latin Quarter. You're getting warmer. Mm -hmm. You're getting warmer. Uh, uh, and wh wh but you, what do you do there? You I like to walk around. Oh, it's a beautiful city to walk yes, around. I like to walk around. I mean, I, I, well, as I was saying, you know, people there are ruder now. Um, and so, I, I mean, I like to walk around, but it's frustrating because, well, people there don't have... I mean, I'm, you know, I'm from New York, and, and I, I assume that I'm the best, like, an amazing walker because, you know, I'm from yeah, New York. Yeah, I haven't seen my mom walk. <laughs> Ready? Get her out of here. <laughs> oh, well, gosh. I just assume that, you know, I mean, because we're from New York and you're kind of, you know, it's a, it's a wonderful dance on the street. You kind yeah. of avoid and do this, you know, it's a, it's a choreography they walking down the street. They are both two great walking cities and right. you, you're from one of them. Right. Yeah. Yes. Well, I, you know, when I got there, I assumed that, you know, it's this kind of provincial town. <laughs> People don't know how to walk here. <laughs> like, they don't walk anywhere. They walk everywhere. <laughs> and the fact that they're just body checking me as they come, it's just part, you know, they're just confused. Yeah, that's um, right. But no, they're not confused. And now, so I just do like a stare down from halfway down the block. Uh -huh. And I started getting really aggressive with people now. Good for you. And I don't care. Yeah. Are you with her, ladies and gentlemen? She doesn't care. I'm a superhero for Christ's sake. <laughs> this, uh, you know what I mean? This, uh, now, I want to uh, talk to you about this uh, uh, film, Her. Oh, my God, you got a hold of something here. Now, now, uh, first of all, I have questions. Now, can I say, or should I not say? Do people know, or do they not know? You know, you know what, what I mean? What are you talking about? Well, <laughs> I'm scared. I mean, you're in, you're in the movie. You're in the movie. Yes, I yeah. am in the movie. Yeah, but, but, you, but, but, but people might hurt themselves trying to find you. Right. <laughs> can I, can I, can we say that the... Uh, the big reveal? Is it a big reveal? Well, I don't know. I never know what to say. Just... You, I, you, you know what it. to say. You're good with words. Just mm, say it. But she's. Uh, no, I'm, I'm. Well, you only hear me. You never. You never that's actually right. see that's me. That's right. That's right. They they hire this actress, <laughs> so we only hear her. <laughs> well. Now, first of all, is the money the same? <laughs> the same as what? <laughs> As if we got to see you. Um, you know what? I don't have to ask my agent about that. Maybe mm -hmm. I got cheated out of uh, something. I don't think Mickey, there's a lot of money in a Spike Jones movie. You kind of do it for um, for the free food. <laughs> <laughs> now this is this is uh, uh, first of all, uh, I know nothing about Spike Jones. Have you worked with him before? Uh, I've never worked with him before. I've I've uh, I love his work though. I mean, I've always been a fan of his, and it's a it's a whole new creative process doing what I did because. I did all of my stuff post-production 
in a studio with Joaquin and with Spike and then sometimes the picture. So I never got to see anybody working on set, really. So right, right. And, and, and one wonders if for an actor that, that's more a difficult pr part of the process. But you, hmm. you are actually there with your co-star. Yes. Yes, but, but in the film, uh, you're not really there with your co-star. You're just listening and, and talking back and forth. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a different kind of a challenge because I think in some ways you're sort of in a, and you're in a very contained environment and so everything is heightened in some way and um, you're, you're hyper aware of your, uh, all your intonation and all the nuance in your vocal performance and, and so it's a, different, it's a different kind of a challenge, I think. Uh, I, I'm telling you, the result is, uh, is amazing. And I, I don't want to go too much farther down the, uh, the road here talking about this. The, the writing of this, uh, the, what a monumental accomplishment this is, for God's sakes. This is an original screenplay. It's an original screenplay, and it's Spike's first screenplay. And it, and it really is, um, I think, incredibly touching and poignant. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 I think, was as much of a sort of... Um, a kind of cathartic experience for him as it was for all of us as actors. I think we all got to really dig deep um, and, and kind of go there. Right. You know? and, 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 and they're promoting the movie as a guy who falls in love with his computer. Well, that's an oversimplification. It really is much, much more than that, but that's how it's being marketed. But you, ta you take that idea and you think, well, Really, is that more than like an eight-minute sketch, really, an eight-minute skit? But the, the fact that it sustains uh, for two hours, it's just a lovely piece of work. Thank you. Me. I mean, I think because the character of Samantha that I play is, um, she's a character that really, well, she says she's growing through her experiences, and so she, she has, she's evolving, and I think if she didn't have that evolution, it would be, kind of be this one-note thing. But because she's discovering herself, and Joaquin's character, Theodore, is discovering himself through this relationship with her, and these two characters are really, you know, finding themselves in one another, um, you know, it can really, it's, a, it's really quite, like I said, a very poignant love story. Well, let me ask you another technical question. We have uh, Joaquin uh, Phoenix, and we'll get to that uh, goofball in a minute. <laughs> Uh, and then we have, have you as the co-star of the film, though we never see you. Now, is the, uh, maybe we've covered this, but is the acting the same if it's just your voice, or is it different if it's just your voice? I don't know. It's, it, it, feels, um, it feels very authentic. And, of course, because Joaquin was kind enough to come in and do the work with me, so I didn't just, I got to be able to actually really see him well, and you believe you believe that these conversations actually are taking place yeah well, they are I mean they really are you know I mean in in every way we were there together um, you know and if, I think because Spike cut it from many kind of different techniques that we use the performance I think has it's hard to have a perspective but it has a, it's it's present but it's also it's not totally human. There, it has a certain quality to well, it. No, you know what exactly it is? Human. It's perfect because there is that intimacy, but there is also the uh, electronic separation of the device, which is the, the computer, the internet, whatever this futuristic thing is that they're living with, you mm -hmm. know? And, and uh, some of it was shot in Shanghai. Is that correct? Yes, I think. Did you go to Shanghai? No, I, I, I've been to Shanghai before, um, but not for the. No, I, like I said, I did everything in in post-production. I almost fell down the rabbit hole in Shanghai, but somebody what, now, what does that picked mean? me back up. What, what happens there? What does that mean? What? What does that mean? You almost fell down the rabbit hole. That's a long story. No, no. we got plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> well, not, the, not a real big deal. You know, I was, I used to work for Moet, which was a really wonderful um, contract because there was so much Can't free take. champagne. Yeah, <laughs> <that's right. laughs> and that was part of the rabbit hole, uh -huh. of course. Uh -huh. uh, it just gets deeper and deeper. And, um, and I, you know, I, it's, there's a real big party scene in Shanghai. You know, um, see, I didn't, I, I didn't, how does that happen? I, people like to party. I don't know. Um, I mean, yeah, they just, they, they, they're very enthusiastic. Big nightlife there. Lots of, like, night markets and nightlife and all kinds of music. And, you know, I guess one glass of champagne led to another, and I almost fell down the rabbit hole, but somebody caught me. Whoa. Now, this, this uh, <laughs> sheds a whole new light on uh, Chinese behavior. <laughs> uh, I, I thought they were, honestly, I thought they were uh, commies. <laughs> You're not allowed to say that. You're not allowed to say that. <laughs> uh, and that's, to me, th and then I see Shanghai, and it's like, oh, my God, it's uh, the f city of the future. Yeah, I don't want to participate in this conversation. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, but it's a, the film is futuristic, but not crazy, not like 2090. It's it's it's, it's the near distant. Yeah, future. the near distant future. And I that Spike refers to it as sort of the optimistic mm -hmm. near distant future. So um, uh, tell me about your. Oh, I'll tell you, we'll talk about that uh, when we come back. But that Shanghai, I was fascinated by the uh, the city is actually that big and that metropolitan and that sophisticated. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty intense. I mean, of, of course, the crazy thing about Shanghai is that you take one wrong t I mean you just can't find your way you're totally discombobulated and it's so big and so different and um, lots of interesting smells going on there. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a whole other world. Mm -hmm. It's a whole mm -hmm. other world. Well, you get a snoot full of champagne, you go to Newark, it's a whole different <laughs> world too. God say. We'll be right back with Scarlett Johansson ladies and gentlemen. Johansson, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, my apologies to, to China. Uh, uh, no, You're no, going to no. hear about that. No, will I? <laughs> let, then let's talk about uh, uh, Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, what a guy uh, this is uh, in this in this movie. And and you 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 wouldn't necessarily think he would be in this movie. On the other hand, he's perfect in this movie. He you is. know what I'm saying? You see a real vulnerable part of Joaquin, which is when you know him. I mean, I, I'd never met him before. I only knew him from your show. Um, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> although I did once, actually, that's not true. I did once meet him um, several years ago in a restaurant, and he had ballpoint pen written all over his hands and face, I remember. And I think he was wearing a suit and tie. Um, he's not like that anymore, no. though. No. Um, he's much more of a grandma. Now, I wish I knew him then, yeah, actually. Yeah, sure, he had that the contract with Moet. <laughs> Is it uh, Moet or Moet? It's Moet. Moet. Yes. Uh, but he, you know, he comes on this show, and uh, we're playing the little uh, practical joke. He's going to leave the films and so on and so forth. And and then so he takes it like a. They set him down for two years and say, okay, you're out of show business. You can't do that. And and then he comes back and he starts doing films, and you, you really get a sense of w w quite remarkable an actor this guy is. He is. He's all, he's an incredibly sensitive, I think hypersensitive person. And when you meet him, you really see that. You know, everything that he is incapable of filtering anything, and so ideas, even too, apparently. And he, he just, you know, all of that comes straight through him, and, it, and, and we know that you see that in person, then you can see that as part of his performance. I think that's what makes him so watchable and uh, enigmatic. The, the other thing that I noticed uh, uh, during the film is uh, they have, uh, and I guess this is the director's decision, they have chosen uh, futuristic pants. Yes. The, the men wear pants that are not quite right, uh, and I'm guessing, well, they, they're not. I mean, I, I, I'm correct they about are that. They're like big diaper pants, kind they're of. Big, that's right. They're big diaper pants. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dave Letterman for Big Diaper Pants. <laughs> are you like me? Do you always have to go? <laughs> um, but it's, uh, well, let's, let's look at a, a clip here. And, and then we'll uh, talk uh, more about this. I, I, uh, okay, what is the clip going to be? I believe this clip is that we are at a um, carnival and we're on a little bit of a date. On a date. Now, uh, keep in mind, this is the disembodied voice of Scarlett Johansson, and she's an operating system. That's correct. And uh, this is now prevalent in American culture, worldwide culture, and they can be friends and company to uh, actual living, breathing humans. Yes, we have instinct. Okay, You're let's instinct. take a look. This is her. It opens on Friday. What's happening there? Uh, He's falling in love with his OS. What, uh, what do you, uh, uh, are you working on a, a movie right now? Well, I have um, Captain America 2 coming out, and then we're on to do Avengers 2. Um, <laughs> Yes, the fight continues, mm -hmm. of course. Um, you know what that movie needs? Futuristic pants. <laughs> we have them. They're in the form of a foundation garment. <laughs> but um, do, you, do you ever get any? What are you and your uh, fiance? Are you engaged? In I, this I am day? engaged. So what, do, yes. what does the man do? Your fiance? Um, he's in advertising. Advertising? Yes. And he is it like in the French advertising? Uh, I guess so. Yeah, French advertising. Yeah. Sure. Uh, 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 I'll, I'll bet he speaks English, right? Sometimes. 